one by Rolohan. It's a Core XY 3D printer that has been put together from PLA parts printed on an Ender 3 V2. The only non-printed parts on the frame are the four Z rods, one in each corner, and of course all the screws to mount everything together. The movement uses two 200 millimeters and one 150 millimeter linear rail for X and Y here, here, and of course there, and two 200 meter, millimeter linear rods on the frame on the back uh, for the Z. There's a belted Z axis, which you can see here, with the motor underneath, and one single idler The previously designed legacy version had a dual lead screw Z, which is this old design, uh, which worked really, really good. Uh, but we found out that we can cut even more of the, uh, the partlets list by just making it a belted Z and also simplifying the design. The initial design for the Rook was made because Rolohan wanted to try the idea of using linear rods for the Z axis and to make it as printable as you can get it. Uh, this has also been learned by and, and used on the Rook 180 and also the Rook Evolution. It's a really good printer for beginners or for someone that just wants a simple project. You have a lot of spare parts, you might even have all the parts um, laying around. Uh, you should be able to put it together in a day if you have some experience. If you don't have any experience, you should be able to do this over a weekend. The Rook uses a total of four NEMA 17 motors and you can pretty much use any NEMA 17 you want, um, maybe avoiding pancake steppers or A and B motors. The Z and the extruder can still be pancake motors, there's no torque being used on them. Um, but try to avo avoid using pancakes on A and B motors just because of the lower torque needed to move the frame. Electronics wise, this is running a SKR Mini E3 V2. It's a really compact board for meant for the Ender 3, but you can use it on anything that uses three, st three steppers and one extruder. It's a really small um, board, easy to put anywhere. Uh, they're really common in the uh, the modding community and the Ender 3 communi community, so you can use these uh, pretty much plug and play. There are pre made configs for Clipper set up for it to run these boards. You can also run something like an MKS Gen L. It's an older AP board, but because this is Clipper, the Rook is designed to use sensorless homing on X and Y. It can also use it on Z if you want to. Personally, I like having an end stop on Z, so I have just a simple little switch in the back here. Makes it pretty much perfect every single time. I do take this printer with me sometimes, and I never have to adjust anything, it just works. The hot end on my Rook is a CHC Pro. It's overkill and I know it but I have one so I'm using it. The uh, heat sink is a CR10 heat sink. 
and then a uh, bimetal heat break connected to the uh, CHC. It's a really good combo and it's underused on the Rook. I don't have enough cooling to make it work properly. The uh, print head itself is a Rookery print head. I've been lucky enough to help Gulsifer develop the Rookery and done some testing and, and it's a really fantastic compact tool head for the Rook. And there's multiple versions available for anything between a 3010 and a 5015 coolers. I'm not using a heated bed. I don't find that I need to, being this is a purely PLA printer. The bed that I'm using is a 150 by 150 piece of glass uh, that I got for free uh, from a glass shop because it was scrap for them. And then I have a printed frame to hold the piece of glass with some clips, you can see here, um, that adapts some boron style triple leveling. So it levels like a boron and it prints perfectly every time. And like I said, there's no need for a heated bed on a small printer like this if you, you're only printing PLA. I have printed some ABS and ASA parts for small clips and, and adapters and stuff and it does work perfectly fine as long as your room is temperatured correctly and you don't have a draft or anything like that. If you are using a bed frame you might want to print the um, actual bed frame part in something like ASA or ABS just because a heated bed on a PLA frame is not the best idea, but it might also work. My particular Rook has quite a few mods on it. I do make a lot of mods myself and that's kind of what brought me into this community, is the, uh, the ease of mods for this printer. I'm using Gulsifer's speed mod top end, so everything XY related is all Gulsifer's mod. I have the Rookery tool head. I have my shield side panels. They are there for rigidity. And then I have my own 120 blower mod for the side. And also the barracks electronics case at the bottom. I'm also using my own designed filament spool holder that's easily removable and also I have my phone mount for my phone at the front so print speeds right now the printer is printing fairly slow this is what I would call a quality setting it's between 100 and 150 on normal speeds and then it slows down to about 40 to 60 on external walls and this is just to keep good quality prints uh, to be perfect every single time never had any troubles with these settings acceleration wise it's between 3 and 10,000 acceleration in my slicer based on different features like external walls and infill and all that stuff. I'm currently running my 4020 coolers at 60%. It's more than enough. If I do faster printing I'll turn them up or even turn on my side fan. But I don't really use it that often. I don't really need it unless I'm doing the extreme speeds. Maximum speeds right, that I can do right now without having cooling issues is about 250 millimeters a second at 35 to 45,000 acceleration. Those are print speeds, not movement speeds. Movement, I can go to about 800 millimeters a second at 35,000 acceleration, or I can do about 600 millimeters a second at 100,000 
millimeters a second, which is way faster than this should ever do, but I can. So one good trick that I've found with this size of printers are that you can use your bed as retraction. So you don't have to have a lot of retraction on your extruder, which is harder for your extruder to do and also harder for your hot end. So what I've tend to do is double my layer height on my Z-Hop and then have my Z-Hop be at about 500 millimeters a second at 50,000 acceleration, uh, which is, it sounds crazy, but it really works and it does save a lot of time for printing, especially when going really, really fast and still retaining a little bit of quality. I'll include a link below for all my print settings, my configs, my entire clipper setup and also all of my Super Slicer profiles so that you can either have a look and compare or use them for yourself. The included profiles are slightly downgraded from what I'm using myself just because I do not like that people use my profiles and then get upset because they don't work on their particular printer. So the print printer profiles that I'm sharing are a little bit slower than I'm, what I'm using myself but with some easy tuning you should be able to find your limits. If you want to print a Rook there's a recommended print guide on Rollohan's GitHub that I would I'm going to link below. It's written by me so I might be partial for it but it guides you through how to print the Rook, all the recommended settings and also how to orient all the parts for it. Um, you can print all of it without supports, but there are some some small parts that we do recommend using some supports on, just because it gives you a better result in the end. I would like to give a big thank you to 3p.no for giving me some filament for the work projects and also future projects and for being so nice and willing to give me some knowledge and just tips and tricks. So all of this Rook is printed with Form Futura PLA, not PLA plus just because I think PLA is good enough. Power wise I'm running a 8 amp external brick. It's overkill and I'm fully aware of that. I can use a smaller one. But I wanted to have this because I might go with a heated bed, which I have not, but I do have the option to do so. Mine is plugged into the back with an XT60 connector, just because I trust those connectors with handling the, the load of that CHC Pro that's 115 watts. And also I have access to my Orange Pi Zero and also I have a light switch for a light bar that I've installed in the front. It does come in handy when I bring it to friends uh, at parties and stuff. So we recently released the 2020 extrusion model of this Rook. Um, it's an all new design, It's everything is made new from scratch but using the same parts except of course the um, 2020 frame. The new thing about the 2020 version is that it's self replicating so you can print all the parts needed to build it on a Rook. So if you already have a Rook and it's your only printer you can still upgrade to a 2020 version and print everything on your Rook. Uh, this also does mean that the bed, which is the only really big part that you still need, is split into three parts that you bolt together and it works really good um, to give you that option to print everything on a book, 
which is a cool idea to have a sub self replicating printer. The motor mounts and the idlers and the X axes are all brand new. Um, they had to be adapted to a 2020 frame, which is slightly different than the printed frame. But it's also easier to print because it's smaller and less parts that you need to print for the, um, the work 2020. So that was a overview of my work. The uh, RIP project for me is kind of finished. I've I've been slowly moving on to different projects. Um, I'm currently building the evolution and um, also starting to do some of my personal projects. My I have some printer designs that I want to get out instead of just modding Rollaholm's designs. I want to thank Rollaholm for. Um, supporting my mods, helping me, giving me tips and tricks, and trusting me to, to build the, uh, the 2020 for him, which is a fun project. I would like to thank Galsifer for the, um, the rookery. The, uh, that print head is uh, it's perfect for the rook. And, um, even though I modded his straight from the start, he did most of the hard work for the rookery with making it fit, making the key and all that stuff. So big thanks to Gulsifer for the rookery. And also Zombie and Joe just because you guys have been there um, either telling me how to do stuff, uh, giving me feedback on my mods. Um, and telling me to do better, which is why the Rook and my mods have become so popular and I thank you for it. So I hope to do more videos in the future. Um, might do some more videos on the Rook evolution when that's done. And of course when my own printer is going to be built, I'll do some videos on that. But thank you for um, watching to the end and I'll see you later, I guess.